This episode of Indie Mogul is brought to you by Squarespace. What's up, Ingly, Indie Moglers? We're here today with Todd Van Hazel. He's just coming off shooting a movie. Yeah, look at the camera while you that, do it. Uh, was recently came out, but it is now not in theaters, depending on <laughs> when you're watching this podcast. We're gonna break some scenes down. We're gonna talk about lighting, color. You guys, you guys first start with script. Script. Is All right, let me. <laughs> What's going on, Indie Mugglers? Today I'm here with Tom Van Hazel, who's an amazing DP, shooting things like music videos for Laura, Janelle Monet, fantastic commercial career as well, and finally shooting the movie Hustlers, which has just come out this recent past weekend. It's still in theaters right now. So for each of these, we we're basically gonna break down each clip in terms of the actual script, camera, lenses. Finally, we're gonna talk about a little Todd secret sauce that you might have sprinkled in there, some challenges from set or a couple things that you were working with. Cool. Uh, Todd, tell me a little bit about the production and the experience of shooting Hustlers. It was really hard and really inspired. And I think we all knew that we had lightning in a bottle. I would call it like a like a little big movie. Yeah. You know, it was like a, a little studio film. What were you gonna shoot in the film on? So we shot on the Panavision DXL2 mm -hmm. using detuned Panaspeed lenses. So places like Panavision and Aerie, they can basically open up the lenses and change some of the physical characteristics so that things can happen where the lenses are softer, or they flare easier, or the blacks are softer, or the highlights glow, or I mean, they can do crazy stuff now. Mm -hmm. So we detune them to get them to look kind of the way so you we- you intentionally add a little character, make them not so clean. Exactly. Yeah. We wanted to shoot large format because we wanted this movie to look big, larger than life. We wanted like the women to look like kind of like superheroes, Radiant, yeah. but we also didn't want it to look like the sharpest, cleanest image. So we tried to find a balance between like really big and bold and poppy, but also like human and imperfect. And that came in the lenses a little bit. So in this scene, Destiny, played by Constance Wu, has just seen Ramona, played by Jennifer Lopez, downstairs giving her killer striptease. Mm -hmm. It's basically the scene where our main character falls in love with the other character and, and locks in what she wants for the rest of the movie, and then she goes upstairs and finds her on the roof and asks her for a cigarette. Back when Stevie Wonder came in. What the Stevie Wonder come to the club for? <laughs> <laughs> Casey had him in the champagne room. Swears to God he isn't blind. Wow. <laughs> How come you're so good? Well, it's a really good looking scene. All right, so Jennifer Lopez over here, and then we've got uh, Constance Wu over here. And All then right. we have her giant coat yes. that she's wrapped her up in. Nice. We knew we wanted to be on a rooftop. There was like a door that leads out from here. So mm -hmm. we knew that the Constance would start here and yep. she would notice Jen here smoking alone. She would ask for a cigarette and she would go join her. So the main thing we knew was that like the, the wide was gonna be from here. Yep. 35. 35 on the wide, what are our punch-ins? Uh, they were probably 80 mils. Yep, so then these are 80 millimeters. We probably used about two of them for those. Yeah, we, we shot this two cam. Really? So you had two cameras running at the same time. Yeah, the wide was probably yeah. one. And then once we got in there, we did cross coverage. Did cross coverage. My skyline. This rooftop did not have anything for them to sit on, or it had like a very low. We, we needed something that had multiple levels so that they could mm -hmm. sit the way they are sitting. Jane Muskie was our production designer. We asked them to build a ledge that looks like it's coming from the building inside, but actually stops right there. It's flat. So they are actually not on the edge of the roof. No, they're sitting on this ledge that we built. They're in the middle, and you guys built a ledge here. Yeah. That had a glass looking like it, you know, like rooftops have these things. Yeah. Chose the plexi that would go inside of it, and then we put inside of it LED lights. So it looks like it's coming from the building inside, but actually that stops right there, it's flat. Okay. Like the scene needs a white point, right? It needs something white so that the rest can go like super colorful and dark so that the eye can like rest in that. So it just gives like a base, right? If you're gonna do everything else like super colorful and dark, you need one thing for the eye to hold on to. Oh. It's a way to make it dark without it feeling murky. Yeah, because all of a sudden now you're saying, oh, that's what regular lit up things should exactly. look like. Exactly, so you know, so you oh, believe. they're just not in the light. So the main light here is just one light, which is a giant backlight, two or three blocks away on a condor. There's one light in here, which is, I think it was a 24K tungsten light with like some orange gel that we picked. She's so intoxicated by Jen. Yeah. So they get this big, gorgeous halo. Mm -hmm. Off to the left, there's this like air conditioning unit. Okay. We hid a fogger back there. Yep. Then pushes fog which catches the warm backlight. So yep. then in the background, there is this like steam and haze behind them. The only other thing on here was one mover light called a solar frame. And mm -hmm. that solar frame we used to paint the background. It's a theatrical light and wherever the background, like those buildings were getting too dull and flat, we put a bunch of color contrasted blue so that uh, they, our kind of warmer pink orange characters yeah. stood out. It makes it almost seem like moonlight is hitting those buildings yes. in the background. Just further romance, right? So there is a fill light going on in their face. So there's bounce here and that bounce bounces back the yeah. gold backlight and that's what you see in their skin. And then over somewhere over here, I think we bounced an, an LED light that was pink. 
So this is probably like a digital Sputnik bouncing into this, and it's doing their faces. That's what's giving them that exactly. little trim on the So fur. that's what gives them the pink in their skin, in the yeah. highlights, in their jewelry. Yeah. And it also puts the highlight in that AC unit in the background. Set up a light and then let it get a little messy. Let it reflect on things. Let it, like that's the reason we used a bigger source and bounced it is not because we wanted it to be prettier, but because we wanted it to be a bigger source that would reflect in all the things on the roof. This scene is so hyper stylized. Yeah. I want to do anything you could do to ground it. Makes it feel like there's probably a neon sign over here. With lighting where it is pretty like hyper stylized, you've got to do something to, to give it some mess. So this is where they're starting to drug the guys and, and basically they pick them up at the bar, they drug them, and then they take them to the club where they run up their credit cards. Hey, these are my sisters. Hi. 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 Ramona. I'm Gary. Gary, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi. Isn't he so cute? Hi. 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 You know what he looks like, don't you? He looks like Tom Cruise. Visually, they start like fishing for so many different guys. So we built this scenario where like we're doing all these repetitive camera moves in this one corner of the bar. It's a real bar in New York City. Kind of goes like this. And then there's a bunch of tables and extras, da da da. And then this is like the bar. We chose this corner because we wanted a scenario where each guy could sit in the corner and he could be surrounded by the girls, by all yeah. our characters. And every time it starts, he's like, hey, these are my sisters. And then the camera whip pans over and dollies in on our other characters entering in. Oh, Most okay. of the coverage, I believe we laid dance floor down on the ground, black dance floor, hmm. so that the dolly could constantly be shifting. Yeah, what is dance floor? So basically, instead of laying track, yeah. which is perfect, but then you're only, you're restricted to one move. Yeah. If you put down black dance floor on top of it, basically the entire floor becomes dolly movable. Yeah. We laid the dance floor and then we just say, cool, next scene, dolly pushes in. Next scene, Stop. dolly wraps around. Next yeah. scene, we would always finish a scene and yeah. then whip off. We would start here and whip on. And then you hide the cut in that blurry gotcha. pan. Talk to me a little bit about the lenses. So what are you working with? Uh, we did most of this on a zoom lens um, really? because a lot of these moves are not only dolly moves, but they're dolly zooms. Here, we used it as kind of a throwback to like our favorite crime movies, like the Scorsese dolly zoom, where like the camera is just like crashing in. It's basically you're yeah, zooming the, forward while you push forward. Exactly, whereas if you did it the opposite way, get that vertigo effect yeah. like, and like you just actually do them together. P.T. Anderson does this a lot too. I think it was a 24 to 275. T 28 That is a lens. But that's like the joy of it is you can go from like really big to like, yeah. you know. Things are just happening yeah. and it's so natural and fast yeah. and easy. Yeah. And that's the point of the scene. The point of the scene is that it's happening, it's easy, and it's fun. Yeah. Cool. So moving on, let's talk about lighting. What are we doing in terms of the lighting of the so scene? So the basic idea here is we wanted the whole bar to be lit because we mm. knew we were gonna have to shoot it everywhere and we had no time. So it was a lot about communicating with art, the art department. Every one of those little practical lamps mm -hmm. that we asked art to basically put them, like we said, you can't put too many of these in the bar. Like it needs okay. to feel like this is the style of this bar is that they put lots of little practical lamps on every single table. You just want as many point sources and glowing things as possible. And then the main thing that's going on is hidden above the bar, there is a long LED strip that's shooting up into the ceiling. Mm -hmm. So off on the right, where those people are sitting, above them, it's hidden because there's like a lip, but yeah. inside that lip is something shooting down and it bounces off the bar. And then you have all the actual bar lights themselves, which are just at that location that we dimmed down. The ones that are on those picture frames, art yeah. brought those in. Those are little mm -hmm. things that just clip and they look like they're like fancy little photo, you know, uh, painting lights. Okay. You want a whole bar to feel like it's a warm, soft glow that's coming from a billion different little sources, yeah. not from like our movie lights. Yeah. And two, it just means everywhere you point, there's little point sources and they reflect and it gives it like a reality. And then we ask for white tablecloths so that it bounces up. You just want to do all these things that give the whole place this like glowing uniform woo yeah, thing. Yeah, it gives this kind of atmospheric soft light exactly. that kind of passes through more. So then we hazed up the place. It takes all these little lights and just yeah. brings it up a little bit. Usually I ask for the hazer to be put in the background. So the first thing you do when you get there is like you talk to the effects person. You say yeah. like the main setup is looking this way. So put the hazer somewhere way back there. Because if the hazer's in your camera, you're just blasting smoke into the foreground. And you're literally just gonna, your front light's just gonna hit it and it's just gonna become this exactly. wash. Exactly, it's better it just to just makes have everything it milky and not and, as visible. Yeah. Uh, for people that don't know, what's the difference between haze and fog? Uh, haze is thinner than mm. fog. Haze will give texture in the air and mm. is generally like lighter. 
fog and smoke look like fog and smoke and are yeah. much heavier and also they don't stay in the air as easily. For the rooftop scene, yeah. it was fog, so it's it looked fog. it was billowing in the background and mm -hmm. for this scene it was haze so it would stay in the room. And then the main thing that's going on here is that above our main area, rigged to the ceiling off of two by fours is light tile. Probably something like this. Yeah. Rigged above yep. is like one or two of them. And these are just big uh, tiles LED of light, light mat that are just kind of shooting down light that like point this. Right down. And that's to give them that kind of soft overhead glow. Exactly. So essentially what it's like is you're making like a big 3D soft light by doing this kind of matrix of little yes. lights everywhere. And then you're cheating with this one. And then the diffusion for this is the haze. Yep. And it makes this kind of, you are inside of this giant soft light. Yeah. And then on top of them, you shape it a little bit more by adding a topper above there. Exactly. And that's that it. That is awesome. This is all art. Like yeah. art had to kill it on this day. They had to bring the right lights with, we had to communicate with the right kinds yeah. of like covers. They, and the bar didn't have any of this naturally. None of it. I mean, it had the hanging lights, you know? Hold on, before we begin, you know we have to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video. From websites to the online store to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and to run your business. It's because of them that our website looks as great as it does since we just returned. Let me let you in on a little secret. We didn't entirely design it on our own. Believe it or not, we actually started with a template. We just picked one and went from there. Then all we had to do was add in this cool little video background, change and mess around with a couple of these menus. Took us literally one afternoon total and all of a sudden, bang, we had a website that we could call our own. If you want to be anything like us, make a beautiful website with next to no experience in designing them, check out Squarespace. In fact, we'll even sweeten the deal by offering 10% off of your first purchase of a website or domain. So head on over to squarespace.com slash indie mogul and you'll be well onto your way to creating a website for free that'll be near and dear to your heart. And now back to the episode. The scene where Ramona played by Jennifer Lopez begins to teach Destiny how to strip. Front hook. Ankle hook. Yep. Knee hook. Hold on with that knee, okay? From here, you can do the carousel. Put your head back. That's it. Tabletop. I can't do that. You can do that. You're gonna do that. You get to see the club for the first time during the day, mm. which means all the lights are on and it's demystified. It's not the club that's meant for men, it's the club that's meant for the people that work there, the women. All right, here so we go. So this is fun, because we actually get to draw the club. The stage kind of goes like this, and then there's steps down on either side. It's like a main pole here. Then there's the entrance to the club is here. There's a bar here, seats all over the place. Yep. The beauty of this, and this is the genius of Lorene, yeah. is that the blocking is such that Constance is like sitting like a kid, yeah. looking up at her hero, and the blocking does all the storytelling you need. Okay, talk to me a little bit about camera, where are we placing this? Okay. Why so, do we place it this way? So the thought here was to shoot the whole scene handheld to camera. The camera probably started in a wide to see what was going on, and then we had another one doing like a long lens through her body to Constance. Then we have looking up at how incredible Jen is from Titer. Mm -hmm. Then we have stuff where we're actually standing with Jen at the pole. Lenses? Uh, probably somewhere in the 50 mil zone. Yeah. Probably 35s, 50s, 80s. Stuff that you can like be with them and all handheld so that it's just it's just with them. It's physical, it's fun, it's loose. Two cameras getting shot. What are our first two cameras that we're shooting with? What are the second two? Everyone likes starting wide for obvious reasons of like, you yeah. start wider, the lighting you've set it, and then everyone gets to know the scene, actors start to warm up, and then as you move in, you start tweaking and getting closer. We probably started shooting more on Jen because she was doing all this for real. We wanted also Constance's reactions to it in real time. This and this. We, we want to make sure like a stunt that when she had nailed it, we had covered it. This is interesting to me because just from the way that you lit it, I can tell even though it's indoors, even though I really have no sight of sunlight or anything in this, mm -hmm. I can tell that this is the club during the day as yeah. opposed to the club at the night. Totally. There's a few things doing that. So the main thing that's going on here is this is all the built-in club lighting, right? Which yep. is basically there's a scaffolding rig up here. LED, you can actually see one in the shot. They're like these LED square lights that yeah. just like put a ton of light. And right now, what is scaffolding for people that don't know? Scaffolding is like uh, these metal beams that can hold a lot of weight. So those, then we had a couple mover lights up here, which are like those theatrical mover lights. Yep. Cross beams are there to outline her muscles only. Make sure that this doesn't look like how the men see it. This is athlete lighting, actually. I mean, yeah. I think a lot of sports commercials do this kind of thing. That's the main difference is like when in the point. scene where she's dancing at night is she's yeah. top lit and under lit. It's like this alien, it's like sexy yeah, alien her lighting. Body's super Smooth, totally, like, she's this yeah. idealized version, but in this scene... You realize it's just hard work exactly. and she's an athlete. Now the stage itself, the floor, you see that ring of light. Now the actual club did this, but we asked Art to build this into a circle and extend it and then make the entire thing here plexi 
white milk plexi. We tested a bunch of plexis and found the one that was the right quality on skin. Inside this ring underneath are LED lights pointing up into the plexi. Wait, this was not a part of the location. You guys built this part into the stage. We extended the stage. So then also what we did is above the center pole, yeah. we built a soft box, which I'm not sure if you can see it in this yep. scene, but there's a soft box above the pole. And you also all around the club rigged all of the ceilings. Yeah. Our movers, there are floodlight LEDs. This is the kind of the idea is like you rig all this and then you can do whatever you want. I see. So with all of this, we're able to then make it look like day or night. So the day scene, what you're looking at is all of these lights turned on to like 100%. The space is now lit. And then the other main thing is that you can see there is that there's a wall of LED lights yeah. that came with the club. When we're at night in club mode, we had them on, we got lucky. And the only other thing that we're missing here is really that there was an open front door. Mm -hmm. And we, I think we put a giant, probably 12 by of white diffusion so that when yep. you look out, it's blown out. Yep. And we shot an 18K HMI through it. Back here, there are like just club lighting, either lamps or steps or LED things. It's all just like yeah. point sourcey no, stuff. I like this because that makes a nice little line point we all, right at her too. Exactly. Yeah. There's also like, there's a shiny curtain on the far left. Like that's mm -hmm. not actually a light. That's just a curtain reflecting light. It's like, often we just ask for like mirrors or like shiny surfaces for the background because you're literally doubling all of your lights in the space. I would say the special sauce is that there's a a quarter blue on this HMI, which my key grip made fun of me for and said that why would you add more blue to an HMI, to an HMI that's already, already blue. pretty blue? Because when you're in a room that's so warm, yeah, you would normally think it's night. But if there's some aspect, you feel a doorway there mm. that is cooler than daylight, you ha I, we had to go extra daylight is the reason. Just regular white wasn't enough. White would have looked like night because your eyes have adjusted to the tungsten. This was awesome. <laughs> Todd, thank you so much for uh, joining onto the show, of course. Thank uh, you. Hustlers, it's still in theaters right now. If you haven't seen it already, absolutely fantastic movie. Seriously, thank it you. looks so freaking good. Uh, Todd, if they have any questions, uh, can they find you online or something like that? Yeah, uh, my website, ToddBanazelDP.com, I guess. Right on, sounds mm. good. Thank well, you. Todd, it was great to have you on the show. Uh, thanks so much for coming out. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, man. I love this drawing, by the way. This yeah, this one came out good. Freaking beautiful. This is so funny. You said you weren't an artist, man. Are you kidding me? This is beautiful. These little stick figures. <laughs> Look at these. They look so good. <laughs>